this entitled parent either has no perspective of value or she's ready for a scam. You'll see which it is when she tries to trade this Happy Meal for this kid's $40 toy. Happy birthday if today's your birthday and on with the revamp show. The characters. My son, myself, entitled boy kid, entitled girl kid, and entitled dad. Let me preface this with my son loves to share. If he has one piece of candy left and you ask him for it, say it's your favorite, he will either give it to you or split it in half so you can have some. He enjoys things so much more if he shares them, so you can enjoy it too. That's just how he is. Also, we are on a pretty strict budget, so he doesn't receive rewards or presents except on special occasions. My son is six, and we just came home from parent-teacher conference, and we're told he was doing great. So he stopped at the store on the way home and let him pick up a toy as a reward. He picks out a $40 Iron Man toy. This toy would light up, was about up to his knee, just a cool fun Iron Man. Upon arriving home, he sees EBK and EGK outside playing. So he immediately wants to go outside and show them his new toy and play with them. I'm watching them from the window. I see the girl go to her house and come back with one of the Iron Man toys that came from a McDonald's Happy Meal. She gives the Happy Meal Iron Man to my son, grabs his Iron Man, and runs back into the house. I run outside and am met by my son who's crying. He tells me that they took his Iron Man and gave him the Happy Meal one as a trade. I am livid. I march over to their house and ED comes to the door. I explain what happened and tell him that I want my son's toy back. He tries to tell me that MS agreed to trade and they are both Iron Man so what's the difference? Meanwhile I see EKs behind him playing roughly with my son's toy. After about 15 minutes of arguing with a very sad 6 year old on my side, I finally threaten to call the cops and ED tells the EKs to give back the toy. They tell him, no we like this Iron Man better. ED tells the kids he will get the same Iron Man next week when he gets paid. And the kids still tell him no. ED then tells me that they can keep it, but they have to give it back when he gets them one. I interrupt him saying, no, they cannot keep my son's toy. That was his reward for doing good in school. The girl then smashed Iron Man on the floor, breaking the arm off of him. My son starts bawling. ED and EK start laughing and EGK just says, Oops, he can have it back now. I take my devastated son home with his broken Iron Man. It's getting late at this point and I tell my son that I'll take Iron Man to the hospital when he's sleeping so his arm can get fixed. But he has to get to sleep so I can take him. About an hour after my son is asleep, there's a knock on our door. It's another neighbor. She tells me that she saw part of it and ED bragged to her husband about it. She also tells me that she does daycare for the EKs and they often act like that. Our awesome neighbor proceeds to hand me a brand new Iron Man, just like my son's. I thank her but tell her I couldn't accept that. She laughs and said that she's putting the cost on ED's daycare bill. So he's actually paying for it. I accept and invite her in for a glass of wine. Needless to say, Iron Man came out of the hospital looking brand new and my son was ecstatic. He also stopped playing with the EKs. This is what I don't understand about entitled families. If you don't get along with your neighbors, it's gonna always be painful anytime there's any conflict. Why ruin a perfectly good relationship just because your spoiled kids want to steal your neighbor's child's toy? So this happened at VidCon Australia this year. My friend and I had gotten front row seats for the send-off show and we were there about 45 minutes early. Five minutes before the show, enter EM. She was dragging her kid to the front row, obnoxiously cleared her throat, and opened her full of BS mouth. Um, excuse me, we were sitting there. I glanced at my friend. I'm sorry, what do you mean by that? You know what I said, my baby and I were sitting there before and you took our seats. The kid looked embarrassed. She looked like she was 11 or so. Ma'am, we've been sitting here since the last panel. Yeah, but we took those spots for the panel this morning. My friend and I just looked at her. Was she for real? Sorry ma'am, but these spots weren't reserved when we got here. The kid started to urge EM to stop. Really? Well, I left a tissue on the seat. You should know what that means since you... EM looks me up and down. Are Asian. I am Asian, but this took me by surprise. I didn't know about putting a tissue on a seat was an Asian thing. Excuse me? Yeah, you know. Anyway, these are our seats. You should really move before the security guard takes notice. We were really ticked now. Sorry lady, but you should know that these seats are for everyone. 
If you think a flimsy piece of tissue will win you these seats, you are very wrong. A few people around us have started to notice what was happening. Didn't school teach you to give up your spots to those in need? I'm sorry, but why are you in need? I'm in need of those spots, now shove off! At this point, the kid was in tears of what was happening. Look, you made my poor baby cry! EM tried to hug her kid, but he flinched back and started to run off out of the auditorium. EM took off yelling at her kid. Still in shock, my friend and I looked at each other. At this point, the lights started to dim out, and we watched as the security guards shut the doors after EM and her kid ran out. I'm happy to report that EM wasn't able to see the show at all in the end. The poor kid deserved better though. Poor thing. Pretty sure if you see a piece of tissue somewhere, that's just trash. And pretty gross trash at that. Nobody wants to pick up a tissue whether it looks used or not. If you see that somebody's left a piece of tissue on their seat, and they're not there, we just think, well, that person's gross, they left their trash behind them. You, with as minimal contact as possible, remove the trash and then take the seat. No one's going to consider that as leaving it as a seat. Is that actually a thing in Asian cultures? Let me know in the comments below. I used to be the manager at a fabric store, so I had a lot of entitled mums come through my doors, but my most fond memory was of this one lady. It was a busy day, so I was helping cut fabric when her number was called. She sets her, I'm assuming, two-year-old on the cut counter and her fabric right next to him. Um, ma'am, could you please take your child off the counter? It's dangerous and I also need the space to cut your fabric. But my arms are full. If your arms are full, there's shopping carts at the entrance. They even have a child spot so he can sit in the cart. Win-win. She rolled her eyes and stormed off, leaving the kid and her fabric. The front really wasn't far from the counter, so I got worried when a few minutes passed by and she doesn't come back. I call over our headset to my coworker to see if anyone sees her. Nobody had. Worried the EP had run out of the store and left her kid, this wasn't the first time this has happened in this store, I picked him up and started to search the aisles. I found her shopping down another aisle. Um, ma'am, I think you forgot something. Where's my fabric? What? My fabric! I told you I needed two yards! You left your baby on the counter. Plus you have to be present while I cut the fabric. I just left him with you! You were watching him while I finished shopping! Me absolutely baffled at this point. Ma'am, that's not how this works. You really need to keep an eye on your kid. You were paid to be here, right? So I'm paying your bills. Just watch him so I can get my shopping done. He's not that hard to watch. If he's not that hard to watch, I'll just put him in your cart. How about that? At this point, I was trying to hand off the baby to her, but she was pulling her cart away from me. I'll take him back when you cut my fabric. Ma'am, really, you have to watch your kid. This isn't a daycare. Well, I'm not finished shopping. I told you I'd take him back when my fabric is cut and ready. At this point, I was fed up and was in an awkward situation, so I just snapped. I turned and walked back to the cut counter where one of my coworkers cut the two yards of fabric. But instead of walking it back to her, I marched to the front of the store where we have a PA system, where I loudly used for the entire store. Attention fabric store shoppers. Would the woman who left her baby at the cut counter please pick him up? Once again, would the woman who left her baby at the cut counter please pick him up? Thank you. You could hear a pin drop through the whole store except the furious wheels of one shopping cart, EPs. I have never seen someone look as red out of anger as she did. She grabbed her kid and stormed through the checkout, where I smiled and told her to have a nice day. I know sometimes parents walk away if they just need one thing, but please remember not to leave your kids with retail workers. Our lives are hard enough as it is. The logic is just baffling on this one. It's like, well, I'm here and I'm gonna be paying for something and that pays your income, therefore somehow I'm entitled to free daycare sitting? The retail worker is getting paid to do a very specific job and that only. So to do any additional work like babysitting, you would need to pay extra. It's not like free babysitting comes along with getting some fabric cut for you. A little backstory. I worked at a McDonald's for just over a year. During that year, I never really got the hang of making ice cream cones. Many got messed up. Many got given away. One day on shift, at the counter, I saw an ice cream cone pop up on my order screen. Other crews seemed busy, so I took it upon myself to make a cone. Knowing I'm terrible at it. We're supposed to fill the bottom of the cone and do no less than five swirls. Ideally seven. 
I filled the bottom just fine. By the time I got to the third swirl, the ice cream looked like it was about to fall over. Normally, other employees would just throw the whole cone out and start over. I'm not like that. I remembered back to being a customer, standing in the lobby, and seeing Mick employees throw out ice creams. So I did what any good McDonald's employee should do. I took that messed up deformed cone, wiggled it to the side so it was upright, and walked through the lobby until I came across a kid. He was deep in his Happy Meal, so I tapped on his entitled mum's, from here out EM, shoulder, and quietly asked EM if her child would like a free ice cream. She shrugged with a, sure, whatever. So I got the kid's attention and gave it to him. Huge smile on his face. It always makes me feel good to do this, and it cost the company nothing, since it was going in the garbage anyways. I go back to the counter. Another crew member had already made the cone while I was in the lobby, so I got back to my usual duties. Cleaning, taking orders, putting out orders, making coffee, etc. When EM comes up to my till with the cone, very angry. What's this? The free ice cream cone I just gave you? EM pulls out phone. Why doesn't it look like this? Do you not know how to do your job right? I look at her phone. It's our website with the picture of a cone pulled up. I gave you that cone because it doesn't look like that. I commonly give away cones for free that don't come out right. How is that fair for my kid? Pardon? It was a free ice cream. Yeah, but why is it all deformed like this? The ones on the website are at least twice as big. I couldn't make it as big as it should be, so I gave it to you for free. At this point, my manager is standing over my shoulder, well aware of the situation. My manager was a pretty funny guy. He loved to poke fun at Karens like this. So he started making an ice cream behind me. Probably the biggest ice cream I've ever seen. Easily 12 plus swirls. Almost twice as large as the one in our pictures. Easily two foot tall. See, at least he knows how to do his job properly. Hey, waves him down. That's for me. He messed up mine. Actually, it's for OP. He's about to go on break and he deserves an ice cream after dealing with problem customers. Now, is there anything else I can actually help you with? Yeah, free ice cream shouldn't be messed up ice cream. The manager nudges me aside and stands at the till. Look, lady, the ice cream you got was free. Free. F-R-E-E. -E. You don't get to return or exchange something that was free. Either go back to your table and sit down, or I'm going to need to ask you to leave. Got my break extended from 30 minutes to 45 minutes, ate my huge ice cream, and went about the rest of my shift as normal. Twas a good day that I will remember forever. This lady is the definition of don't look a gift horse in the mouth. When somebody gives you something for free, just say thank you. And don't raise your expectations any higher than that. Do people give away free ice cream at McDonald's? Yeah, not very often. So if someone's giving you something for free, there's probably a reason for it. Don't push your luck because then you just made a fool of yourself in front of everybody. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. All right, Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.